Hello, this is Eric of Not Bows, and today I'll be talking about four of the best ITX motherboards. So these motherboards, I'm going to be comparing the features of each one so you can get a better idea of what is best for what you want and what you need. Now let's get started. ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming The ASRock has a simple to the point rear I.O. It only has three audio ports. One other thing it lacks as well as a BIOS flashback. A BIOS flashback allows you if you have an unsupported processor or simply a corrupt BIOS to actually get your BIOS back to working order. My MSI that I'm using right now, the B550 um, Gaming, well what happened to me is uh, my computer had a force restart, BIOS got corrupted, and the BIOS flashback, thank goodness, saved me. So this can be a consideration for someone looking at a computer. So another thing to note is this board has angled serial ATA ports, which can actually be nice because you can have straight out runs rather than ports sticking up from your board. However, some computer cases, including my own, which happens to be the Vell case, Revision 1.1, is the cables cannot go in there because the power supply is against the board. So, as long as your case actually has the room to run cables. Now, another concern is if you're like me and like tweaking things. The one issue with ASRock I personally have had is if you, say, tweak the RAM or CPU too much, it either works or it doesn't and you'll have to reset your BIOS and there's really no way to get around this without uh, the situation of pulling your graphics card and doing the jumper, putting your graphics card back in every time it fails because it doesn't recover like some other boards do. So, so where the ASRock board does win is in terms of just simplicity. It just simply works. You're not tweaking much, not going beyond any sort of bounds. It should be absolutely fine for most people. It is actually the second lowest in this entire list for price. It does work with RGB, it has a strip built in, and it has two headers. So price at time of recording is about $200 US. Gigabyte B550 Aurorus Pro AX. The Gigabyte B550 Aurorus Pro. This board has to be the best value overall. The reason why, well, it's the lowest price in the roundup, it has all your basic features that most other boards have, except it lacks one thing, a Type-C USB port. And that's going to be important for someone that wants an extra port and they have it on their case or plan to get a case with Type-C connected on it. However, you still have your regular um, USB Type-A connection, which is just going to be absolutely fine for most people. It also has great thermals with a heat pipe included in it. Your back I.O. is also like ASRock, fairly simple, but it does have BIOS flashback, which is, of course, very important to avoid BIOS corruption and not be able to restore your BIOS to what it was. It also includes an RGB strip, just like the ASRock board, and also has RGB headers. At 180 US dollars, this is pretty much the best value. Also, if you use a G-type processor, this particular board has three outputs. It's the only board that has three display outputs rather than just a maximum two, having two HDMI and one display port. In terms of value, we have the winner. ASUS ROG Strix B550i Gaming. The ASUS B550 Strix ITX motherboard. Well, this one is a nicely organized layout for a board. All the radiator, fan headouts are all listed together, the RGB headers are all in line together, so the layout is quite nice. It is only board with a fan, which luckily only turns on when temperatures get hot, and looks to be, at least in the pictures, to be user replaceable. So if you remove that shield, take out the fan, if you have good airflow, you may possibly be just fine without that fan there, or you can simply um, replace it if you ever need to. The fan should last for a very long time. I'm expecting seven years plus lifespan out of it, so that shouldn't be a concern. And I don't think it'll be overly loud as it doesn't need to spin at extreme speeds. And most people won't also notice it over their gaming session. Now, one thing this 
Asus motherboard has that will be wonderful for some that really care is a dedicated USB audio port and none of these other boards have that. So the idea of the USB dedicated port is of course your lowest signal to noise ratio giving you the best overall quality for as in terms of built in can give you. It uses the Realtek S1220A chipset which is an upgrade over all the other motherboards in this roundup. The ASUS board doesn't look to have any USB strips built into it but it does again have the headers for your RGB just like the two other boards previously listed here. In terms of value I don't see it quite as good for a value proposition but hey you might like this board specifically and it seems like it should work well as long as the BIOS is up to snuff. Now this board comes at the highest price just marginally so at about $230 USD. MSI MPG B550i Gaming Edge The MSI the IO has optical none of the other boards have optical out port right on the IO. Also included is a PS2 port. So a PS2 port is not PlayStation it actually is an old port that still functionally works and is very usable. A lot of professional gamers really swear upon the PS2 port because of the lack of lag and it just works. So follow my link below to Yes Tech City and watch the video on what's up with the PS2 port. What does this MSI board lack? Well the one thing it does lack is any sort of RGB support. It only supports a three pin rainbow connection LED. So this is specific, very limited in your RGB options. It's your last one to choose from for all your four board options if you want RGB lighting. But another thing this has is fault indicator lights. It has four different ones. One for the CPU. So if the CPU does not work or is failing. Another one for the RAM or your memory in your computer. So if your RAM fails or sticks on improperly, the RAM light will go on. And it also has a boot indicator light. So in my case, when I actually overclocked, the boot light went on to tell me that that failed. And when I put Ryzen 3200G processor, which is not supported in this board, the CPU light turned on. It also has one other fail light, which happens to be, do -do, I got this listed, VGA for your graphics. So. If your graphics didn't work and something's wrong with your graphics card, you may see that VGA light on. And this has been quite useful for me personally. And the MSI board is $222 at the time of filming. So in terms of MSI, one of my users highlighted something about MSI the board. Well, the reset is not only a jumper that's hidden behind the I.O. You can actually hold the power button when the system's off for five seconds and you'll reset your BIOS. That's probably one of the simplest BIOS reset options of this entire lineup here. So if you're worried about having to open your IO and pull that little jumper, no, don't worry about that. Hold that power button for five seconds, let it do its thing, and then press the power button again and you'll be up and running. Also, some people have been concerned about, well, heat sinks you can't fit many different options well so far the amd wraith prism worked for me the what's else let's see do, 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 the be quiet shadow rock lp also worked for me luckily i do have low profile ram i purchased otherwise it would not work because the io shield on the back well it's too tall now another one that works is the Noctua NH-L12S goes pretty much any direction other than the direction where your heat pipes will face towards RAM because RAM gets in the way. So you can see these two little blocks here. This is definitely going to limit what kind of back bracket you can have because of these protruding higher than usual. It has two little spots that stick up quite far and that limits your options for coolers. So you might wonder, is there any difference with these B550 IDTX motherboards that may have not been a consideration to your, with your B350 or B450? Well, all four of these boards have a much bigger VRM heatsink, which that's the one at their rear, rear I.O. that extends out. 
Well, the problem is it really limits your cooler options. My Be Quiet cooler, well, my Shadow Rock LP, well, would use to fit my board no problem. In fact, I'd get it fit in my Gigabyte B450, barely, and without having to worry about the RAM size. And it fit into my B350 ASRock, it bit, fit into the ASRock B450 as well, not a problem. And most other boards are B450s and 350s, it's not gonna be a problem. But these new ones, we gotta keep in mind that up there is gonna make things a lot more difficult. So basically, a cooler that used to fit and was usable might not be usable this time around. So hopefully you figured out what board you like and what actually is useful to you personally. Thank you for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS Tech and Hardware.